Are my eyes playing tricks on me, or is this reality? Holy crap. Actually happening. Mark your calendars, everyone. The fountain at Point State Park is officially open. Welcome, everyone, to a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny day here in downtown Pittsburgh. Back for another Pittsburgh adventure. That is a very loud Jake break. This is my third revisit here. And no, it's not news to me that the fountain's working because my previous trip, Park Rangers did tell me that it does open in May. And I started following their Facebook page and they announced the beginning of May that it did officially open. So no, it's not a surprise, but I am happy to see it in person. But I did return for a specific reason. And it's because of you guys. In my previous Pittsburgh videos, many of you have commented stating that there is a hidden secret located below the fountain. And I thought people were just kind of blowing smoke up my butt, so to speak. I'm gonna grab a seat here on the bench and uh, just discuss for a second. But many of you said, yes, there's a hidden secret underneath the, underneath the fountain itself and other parts of this area. And it's known unofficially as the Fourth River. And that got me thinking, I'm like, is there any truth to this? So I did some digging and it's actually true. So we're gonna actually discuss some information about that, some information I found online as far as what it actually is, how it was formed, how big it is, stuff like that. We're also gonna do some talking later on about some other suggestions and recommendations that were given to me if I did indeed return to the Steel City. Plus, we're gonna to go to a few other areas around the area here. I wanna show you a few things, some things you may have seen before, some you may have not, but we'll get to that later, one thing at a time. So I ask you to come along with me for a new Pittsburgh adventure. There it is. Officially flowing and operating. Point State Park Fountain. Yeah, I have to say, pictures don't do it justice. That is really incredible in person. And with the people walking by, you get a sense of the scale. And you can tell there's actually um, a few different heads. You got the main one shooting up, and there's three of them doing a fan, spreading the water out. And at nighttime, there are lights that does illuminate it too, so we will definitely get shots both day and nighttime. You know what I'm thinking? I think we need to celebrate. And I know just how to do it. All right, guys, trivia time. What TV show from the 80s and 90s, I believe, had a fountain very similar to this in the opening credits? I'll give you a hint. The main star of the show was Al Bundy. That was his character name. You guessed it, yes, Married with Children. Not the same fountain, but that definitely does resemble it. When I first saw it, I'm like, wait a minute, that looks really familiar. Married with Children came to mind. Well, that certainly is one way to get a suntan and to cool off. Yeah, I'm not gonna look. I don't wanna see. Here's a look from the other side. Pretty much any where you go to to look at it, you got a great backdrop. And there's looking at the inner city. You got one bridge on the left, another bridge off to the right. You almost get a rainbow effect too with the spraying water. And on windy days, it's been known for water to go clear over the edge. We're actually gonna see this too from a bird's eye view when we do the Duquesne incline. I will be going to do another video on that since it is operating again, and we'll see it from up top. Now on really hot summer, humid days, I'm sure a lot of people like myself would be tempted to kind of dip their toes splash some water in themselves, maybe even go in there swimming, which I don't think would be a good idea. But there are signs here stating 
no wading, swimming in a fountain. But it doesn't say that you can't enjoy the benefits of a windy day. You come here on a hot summer windy day, you're gonna get a nice shower of water thrown on you. That's a pretty easy way to cool off without getting in trouble. Okay, so now the main reason that we came here is to learn more about this fountain and what's beneath the park here. So first thing I can tell you a bit about the fountain itself. It is known as the fountain at Point State Park and the information I'm getting is from two different websites. I will link them down below in the description as well. It says the fountain is located at the headwaters of the Ohio River in Pittsburgh's Point State Park, designed by architects Stotts, Hess, McLachlan, and Foster. The fountain, the tallest in the United States, which I don't know exactly what that means, shapes approximately 6,000 gallons of water per minute into a spout about 150 feet high. I don't know if that's 150 feet high. That might not be operating at full capacity. It is fed by the famous so-called, and it has quotation marks, Fourth River. The official name for that is Wisconsin Glacial Flow. Located about 55 feet below ground, the fountain was dedicated by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania August 30th, 1974, marking the completion of Point State Park. So that's information about the fountain itself. Now I'm gonna pull up the other website stating about the Wisconsin glacial flow known as the Fourth River. It says the mysteries of Pittsburgh's Fourth River, Pittsburgh's underground aquifer may not resemble its above ground siblings, but it still does plenty for the city. It says our mythical Fourth River isn't a fast flowing body of water, but something much cooler. It's an aquifer, 50 feet of rock and sand on top of bedrock through which water flows formed many thousands of years ago by the coming and going of glaciers. That's how it's got its name, the Wisconsin Glacial Flow, because I believe the glacier came from Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken. We may find that out. The aquifer continues to fuel life as we know it. It's so important, we want to break it down. So it says, ice, water, and rocks and sand, formative forces for the aquifer. Glaciers melted, water carved into the earth and deposited rock and sand that formed the rivers and riverbanks of our landscape. Uh, 798,000 years ago, the time when the glacial changes began to carve Pennsylvania's landscape. 50 to 54 degrees is the temperature of Pittsburgh's groundwater. 600, the number of gallons per minute a well could draw from Pittsburgh's aquifer. So 600 gallons per minute can be drawn from the aquifer. North side, south side, and the point where we are is the areas that is on top of the aquifer. So I believe North side's over there towards Heinz Field, if I'm not mistaken. South side's over near South Station Square area, maybe. I'm getting my orientation all mixed up. And the point, obviously, is where we are here, which is the confluence of the three rivers. So the aquifer is underneath this area, which is a pretty good size. Nine million, it says the number of gallons of water downtown wells drew from the aquifer in 1950 when use was at its peak. And now, according to the website, the aquifer does supply the water for this fountain. So it's not coming from the rivers, which is a good thing, because these rivers, the Allegheny, Monongahela, from in the Ohio is pretty murky, dirty. I don't want to be rude, but I mean, it's not clear. So the water that's coming up from underground is being filtered through the rock and sand and makes for a beautiful looking fountain. So that was something that I want to share with you guys because again it was recommended to me by many of you guys saying hey you know there's a fourth river you know there's a hidden river under the, the landscape here and even though it's not a river it's still some pretty cool history and uh, to know how it was formed and that's still being used today for this I think is uh, pretty awesome so hope you guys enjoy that information Let's slow things down just a little bit. This feels so good. I'm sitting here in the sun. It's upper 60s, around 70 degrees. I got a breeze coming, which means I'm just getting a little spritzing of water. It feels so, so nice. But. Now that we're talking about fountains, I want to mention, as we've seen in my 
Pittsburgh Fountain Hunt Tour. This is not the only fountain here in downtown. There's actually a bunch more. So let's take a quick look at just a few of them right now. Who remembers these steps? I know I do. These are the infamous steps that I went down on my previous Pittsburgh trip. Curiosity got to me. I'm like, what's down there? Because it goes down and around. Got to almost the bottom step and I triggered a sensor and it started beeping really loud, like echoing through the buildings here, a flashing light and a message saying, you entered an unauthorized zone, please leave immediately, something like that. Hmm. I wonder where that goes to. Oh, <laughs> my curiosity is getting the best of me. Whoops. Whoops. Well, since then, many of you have commented as to what they are. And I've got a few different answers, a few different responses. So I ultimately don't know which one is correct, but I will share what was told. A few people said that these are emergency exits for the buildings. Like each one of these stairwells connects to an adjoining building because there's actually at least four or five of these in this plaza. So I guess in case they were in the basement, they have access to the surface through these stairwells. Others have said there's underground parking garages that you get access to with these. A few others have said too, I think this is the most common one is that there's a, a cafeteria, I think in building three, I think it's called, I think this is two behind me here. Building three supposedly has a cafeteria. And at one time these were open to the public. They said, some people actually said they remember going down. Others have said, yes, I've seen people coming and going. And as you can see, it's not posted. You know, it doesn't say do not enter. But down there in the corner is a motion sensor. So once it picks up any activity, it does trigger the alarm. And I guess that's to prevent people from wanting to sleep down there or to do anything, you know, illegal but I still don't know where it goes. I turned around before I even got to see around the turn, but a few other ones here do have steps going straight down to a door, which probably only come out you know, from the inside. So I wanted to share that with you that, you know, these are here, they're not sealed off, they're not gated off, but apparently you're not supposed to go down them. But I guess some of them are for garages, some of them are for cafeterias, some of them are just for emergency exits. But yes, <laughs> I'll never forget that day. Behind me 
So that was just a quick look at a few of the fountains that are actually open right now here in the middle of May in downtown Pittsburgh. There's still a handful that are not. Most likely the end of this month, beginning of June, they'll start operating. Now there is one in particular I did want to share with you guys. I was hoping it was open, but it's not. That is the Mellon Square Garage, the Mellon Square Plaza. I featured that in my previous video for the Fountain Hunt Tour. And I went back each day this week that I was here and it's just not working. Now we're able to get up close and personal to it. The area is open, but the fountain doesn't have any water. It's not turned on. But the reason I wanted to share that with you guys is because I found an information board on the other side of the garage and it actually has some history tied to it. I'm gonna put it on the screen now. You're welcome to pause it to read it. But that's been around for a while now. And that particular fountain area, the Mellon Square area is considered basically an inner city oasis. With the fountains, there's like a garden area, a lot of trees numerous seating areas some great views and just a nice little getaway even though you're still in the city but it gives you a, you know a small sense of nature and peacefulness and calmness you know fountains and running water people enjoy i certainly do but there's a you know there's greenery there there's flowers there's benches there's tables it's just a nice area to come to and even the other waterfall that cascades down towards the sidewalk that one wasn't working either so i'm guessing it's going to be coming up soon but I unfortunately can't share it with you in this trip. But knowing that it has some history tied to it and it's been around for a while, I was hoping to be able to share it, but better luck next time. But I did learn of three new fountains though. Two of them were mentioned by you guys, two suggestions. First one is actually straight across the river over there near the field, a couple hundred yards upriver from the Mr. Rogers Memorial. It's known as the Water Steps. And what it basically is, is these big stone blocks that are kind of staggered that form almost like steps coming down. And when it's open and the water's running, the water, you know, cascades over the stones and steps, forms pools of water. And I've seen a lot of pictures of like crowds of people being there in the water. I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that or not, but it looks like it's a popular spot to play, to have fun, especially with kids. But water steps just across the river. I checked it each day no running water yet the other one though is actually over there by station square specifically right by joe's crab shack and it's called bessemer court and bessemer may sound familiar because i did a little dialogue stating what that big piece of equipment was called a bessemer condenser and behind that when i was here there's a fountain that was covered in tarps i didn't even realize it was a fountain so that was mentioned to me i went over there Water's in the fountain, tarps are off, but it's not working. So again, just not here at the right time of year, but we're getting close. But this was the main focus right here, the Point State Park fountain. But I did find a third fountain. This one I found myself on Google Maps, just looking in the downtown area to see if I missed anything and what other areas I could check out. And this one is kind of nestled in between a bunch of high-rise buildings. And um, I'm not gonna give any spoilers. Let's head over there do the magic of editing and check it out right now. Okay, we have a new location for a fountain. This is known as the PPG building. This mega glass structure. Sign says PPG, and sure you can hear the water. This is known as the PPG Plaza. Man, look at that. So it does some different performances. I guess you want to call it that. It does some different heights. And it also illuminates, as you can tell, too. And on top of that, it's actually working. And then there is silence. Now you can see it's uh, lighting up there. Nighttime, I'm gonna try to get some shots. I'm gonna stick around here for a little bit. There it goes. 
see how close we could get. Oh, it's going away. <laughs> I can only imagine how many people on a deer ran or walked through there thinking they're going to beat it and then next thing you know you get soaked. Here's got to go to touch it, it goes away. Oh, now it's just teasing me. And uh, the way it's designed too, although it's not really visible, there's cracks between the, the stones here, and the water is draining down through them. You can actually hear it when the, when the fountain stops. You can hear the water draining. So they do have a built-in drain system through the cracks of the stones here. That's why the stones are only wet for so far, because the water drains off. So it's a pretty, I guess you could say, uh, intelligent design that looks like it's just stone, but it's actually a drainage system underneath of it. Oh, you got pretty tall. It's like the Bellagio Fountains of Pittsburgh. And in case you're wondering, you can see the, the structures all around. This is PPG Plaza. That's 3rd Avenue. 4th Avenue. Out there is Stanwick, which is near the Gateway Plaza. And if you were to go, I believe, straight out that way, I'll take you towards the Monongahela River. Okay, I returned back to PPG Plaza. The sun is officially set. And this place is transformed like nothing I've ever seen. The tops of the buildings have LED lighting shooting down here at the plaza and the fountain. And the camera I know is not doing the greatest quality with low light, but being here in person, look at the ground. It's glowing. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna get a couple shots of the water fountain once again. Still photos and some video footage since it is now under the nightfall it looks completely different look at that so cool Not the biggest fountain in downtown Pittsburgh, but without a doubt the most fun to watch. Really small resemblance to the Bellagio fountains in Las Vegas, minus the music, minus the big body of water. But hey, not bad, I like it.
So what did you think of that? PPG Plaza Fountain, that thing is amazing. Not the biggest, not the most incredible, but simply stunning. I stayed there until it got dark as you saw, and the sun went down and the lights came on. The top of those towers have these super bright, intense LEDs that shoot down into the plaza, the courtyard area there, and everything starts glowing. It was phenomenal. I think I certainly captured some of my, my best photos there. Doing low light photography is often difficult, especially when you're using a smartphone, but if you know how to use the pro mode and adjust the settings, you can get some really great shots. But that fountain though, I could watch that for a long time. Just dancing around, doing different formations, and the lighting is my favorite part. The lighting with the water, you can't beat it. The only thing that would make it better is if they had music playing, but hey, that's over in Vegas at the Bellagio Fountains. But PPG Plaza, that fountain is a close runner-up to this one. This one's the largest, most impressive. That one is the most fun to watch, hands down, without a doubt. But now we're going to do another teleportation through the magic of editing, and we're going to return right here to where we are at Point State Park in the evening time when the sun's going down. I'm going to show you some footage, share some photos, and then we'll return right here in present time. Currently looking at the Carnegie Science Center with a gorgeous sunset behind it. And people are flocking to Point State Park to capture the breathtaking views.
definitely resembles Mario Silver and Fountain without a doubt. You can see the lights are on now, lighting up the water. I'm going to go to wide angle and show you. There we go. Not the best quality, but at least you can see everything. But it's certainly worth the return trip at night. Looks pretty spectacular. I love the magic of editing, right? So we got to see Point State Park Fountain daytime and nighttime. What do you guys like better? Which view is better, daytime or nighttime? Let me know in the comments section. But now we got the fountains out of the way. There is one other thing I do want to discuss. And that is other recommendations and suggestions that were given to me by many of you who are either local to Pittsburgh or who have been here or just happen to know of some other things to see and do. So the first one, well actually two of them do involve the water here, the rivers. Let me grab myself a seat over here. So the first one is known as the Gateway Clipper. The Gateway Clipper is a big river boat that gives tours of the downtown area by the water as it goes up and down the Allegheny, Monongahela on the other side and the Ohio. I looked it up online. Well, it is an open operating business, but weekends only, Saturdays and Sundays. I'm here Monday through Friday. Today's Thursday, I go home tomorrow. So I know I would certainly enjoy that. I know many of you would to get out on the waters and to learn more about the downtown area from a tour guide and just to see um, everything from the, the water, you know, would be really incredible, but it's only weekends only. Maybe in the summer they operate seven days a week, but that means I need to return again in the future on a weekend. The second one though, does involve the water as well. And that one though is unfortunately out of business. And it's known as the Pittsburgh Duck Tours. And actually I think it used to operate I want to say over there near Heinz Field, Heinz Stadium, I think, somewhere in that area. But what it is, or what it was, are amphibian vehicles. And I'll show a picture or two. Amphibian vehicles are originally military vehicles. They're suited to run on land and water. And what these vehicles would do was drive into the river and they would kind of convert into a boat. They would float, have a propeller, propulsion system, and they would drive you, again, like a boat on the river and then when you're done, you exit up the ramp out of the river onto dry land and drives like a vehicle. I guess in 2019 or early 2020, it shut down permanently. And I was looking up, that's the reasons why. And it was no fault to the particular business here, but there's been other duck tours. One in particular, I guess it had a really tragic accident where 17 people died. I guess the boat sunk underwater nobody was wearing their life vest and 17 people aboard died and that i guess raised insurance rates through the roof for attractions like that so even though the one here in pittsburgh had a clean safety record they were dealt the consequences of other ones that weren't so fortunate and they said that their insurance cost doubled 100 percent they were no longer able to make a profit if they were to stay open so they were forced to shut down which is unfortunate. That would be another fun thing to do to drive on land and water here in downtown Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh Duck Tours is no longer open. One final recommendation, which again, I would love to do, it would require me to take probably an Uber to get to it. It's called Tour Ed, T-O-U-R hyphen E-D, mine, Tour Ed Mine. It's a mine tour. I believe coal mine tour uh, because Western Pennsylvania is rich in anthracite and that is an underground coal mine tour. I think the difference with that one compared to ones I've been on, it's actually taking you inside the mine, 
by like a vehicle pulling a wagon. It's not on rails. It's not a mine trip or a mine car or a Loki. It's like a, like a little tram that takes you into the mine. But again, only open on weekends. So I do definitely appreciate you guys reaching out to me. I do a lot of research when I go to these locations, but there's obvious things I do miss. And although I do appreciate the suggestions, I obviously can't get to every one of them, but I at least look into it and see if it's worthy for me to invest the time to go there or if I can make it work during my trip. And if it doesn't happen this trip, uh, like I said, I'll come back again in the future. Now, I've been here three times in the last two months. That's been a lot, but I absolutely fell in love with Pittsburgh here. I mean, this is my first real big city outside of New York City that I've been to. And it's a whole another experience, a whole another world, but yet I'm only five hours away. I definitely love Pittsburgh. I will be back again, but I'm gonna give it some time. I'm not gonna come back so soon. Probably at the earliest, it'll be end of summer, maybe towards the fall. And um, I'll have to plan around to see what's working, what's not working, what's open, what's not working. But I will definitely come on a weekend, hopefully bring some friends that time. And the main reason I do keep coming back too, aside from loving the city, is Amtrak. Amtrak drops you off right in the city, Union Station. It's a five minute walk to my hotel. It doesn't get any easier than that. There's a boat, <laughs> Squirrel 30. So I don't have to worry about a vehicle. I don't have to Uber here. I pretty much get my uh, Metro card and take either the bus or the Pittsburgh T to get everywhere they wanna go or like that on foot. So thanks again to everyone who re reached out. Uh, for future visits and locations if you guys know of anything that you think i would like we'll love to hear from you if you don't want to use the comments section my email and facebook is always below every video you can send me a private message there and uh, fill me in and i'll definitely consider looking into it and you never know you may see your suggestion in a future video somewhere anyways though i'm gonna wrap it up here i know i did a lot of talking if you made it this far and were able to hear everything out to the end thank you so so much i know sometimes i get long-winded I realize it myself, but it's like, I have so much to say. I want to get it out. And um, coming here for the third time, even though um, not every fountain, not everything is working fountain wise, tour wise, the main reason was for the Point State Park fountain, at least for this video. But I have other videos and filming since I mentioned the Duquesne incline. No, I didn't say Dickens or Duskany. It is Duquesne. I learned that. And uh, we'll not mistake that pronunciation again. Um, what else am I doing here? I'm doing Duquesne. I'm doing a new Chow Time episode, which is another viewer suggestion, multiple viewer suggestion. You'll see that coming up if you didn't already. What else do I have planned? Um, I have to check my list, but I'm not gonna give away all the spoilers. If you are a Patreon member, you'll find out before everyone else. I do share the photos, some video clips, and even unlisted videos on my Patreon page, $2 or more you'll find out what I'm working on because my content that I'm filming here in May, you're probably not gonna see this till June or July. I have a big backlog of videos, but I'm gonna cut myself off. I'm starting to ramble and I gotta exit stage right. So thank you so, so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the Pittsburgh adventure. Check the Pittsburgh playlist for more adventures from the Steel City. And lastly, hope you guys have a great one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care everyone.